Welcome to podcast 3.4. Here we go. Chapter 3, section 4, the last section of this chapter. And um, this is going to introduce to you the concept of the mole. And it's kind of interest, interesting um, because it's a little confusing thing, but it's probably one of the most important concepts in chemistry. So let's look at this, atomic mass. Now you guys recall... Uh, atomic mass is the weight of an atom in atomic mass units. In other words, the scale for our atom is AMUs, right? And you'll find that number, of course, right here on your periodic table. Um, but that number is not very practical. I mean, I, w I shouldn't say the number, but that unit, uh, the AMUs, is not very practical for us because we're, we're compared to an atom, we deal in, in a world that's a lot larger. And there are many, many, many atoms in virtually any uh, sample size that we use. And so we, chemists had to come up with another unit, a unit that was a little more manageable for uh, people. And they came up with this unit called the mole. Now, you may think of a mole as this uh, furry creature that... Uh, digs holes and stuff, and I've got a few moles. Of course, if you look on my table uh, in my class, I've got Professor Molium there. Um, but let's look at the definition of this, because this is a really important thing. The mole is the number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12. So hopefully you recognize this, carbon-12, right? That's an isotope of carbon. Another way I could write that would be like this, C with a 12 there. And a six there. Remember that? Oops, that's not a very good six. Remember when we wrote the isotopes, the, form, uh, the symbols for that? So there's, if I had 12 grams, I put on the scale, I had 12 grams of carbon-12, there would be this many atoms uh, in the sample. Now, how many atoms is that? Well, a guy by the name of Avogadro, Medius Avogadro, uh, did some gas law experiments and determined that, that gases under the same conditions have the same number of particles. And this number turned out to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay? Now, that is a gigantic number. I mean, honestly, think about it. As 6.02 and then add another from here on, Add another 21 zeros. Gigantic number. That number is so big, in fact, that if if we gave everyone on the planet, I don't know, a billion dollars, we could do that for 100 million Earths. All right? And I've heard a lot of analogies. If everyone on the planet counted numbers from, you know, starting at one, uh, it would take like 3 million years to count that many uh, that high. It's just a gigantic number. It's more than you can imagine. However, what's important for us is once we start having this many number of atoms, okay, now we start seeing sample sizes that are big enough for people to handle, right? Because you've got to remember an atom is so small. So we need these large amount of atoms to be able to handle a sample. And uh, this this number is just going to be super, super important uh, all year long. So Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, is the number of atoms in a mole. Now, I don't want this to confuse you too much, but let's think about this. When I say one dozen, what do you do? You go, oh, well, that's 12, right? Now, it doesn't mean it's 12 eggs or 12 bananas or 12 balls, does it? It just means 12, right? So whenever you hear the term mole, one of the things you can think about is this number. Doesn't matter what you have, it can be that number. Now it's impractical to think of anything other than atoms or molecules or photons of light uh, to be that to have that many because otherwise it's too big. For example, let's say we had that many soccer balls. Well that would cover the earth, I don't know, a mile deep or so. It's just an, an, an incredibly large number all right but like a dozen means 12 a mole means that many all right and that's going to be very very useful because we're going to do a lot of converting converting with that number so let's look at the next thing now this <clears throat> this is the molar mass all right the mass in grams of one mole of a substance so let's say i had the mass of one gram of carbon well, quite conveniently, one 
mole of carbon weighs 12.011 grams. All right, very convenient, right? And since one mole of carbon, 12 atoms are in uh, 12 grams of carbon, if I had one mole of this, uh, of, an, of carbon, I would get that mass. Now remember, when we talked about why these numbers are a decimal number, right? Remember why that was? It was because of the isotopes. Okay, so if I took on a scale, I grabbed some carbon, I dumped 12.011 grams of carbon, I would have uh, one mole. And again, one mole equals this number, 10 to the 23rd. And in that case, it would be atoms. Now, we could do that with any element. Let's, you know, how many uh, grams would one mole of nickel weigh? Well, all I do is I go and find nickel, which is sitting right here. And one mole of nickel would weigh 58.693 grams. Okay. And that goes for anything. What about one mole of gold? I would not mind having one mole of gold. 196.067 grams. Boy, with, with gold being uh, something like $1,700 an ounce right now, I would love to have that amount of gold. All right, so this number that we've seen in the past, this number right up here, which we've called the atomic mass, is also called the molar mass. All right, and really for all our purposes, pretty much the rest of the year, we need to understand that that's how many grams there are in a mole of that element. It's, it's important to know that, it's, that the scale is atomic mass units, but it's not very practical for us. It's almost like you could put a little gram sign right here at the end of it. There's probably a few chemists rolling their graves right now by me doing that. But, but just for our purposes, we can do that. Okay. So let, now that we have this conversion factor um, of a mole and a molar mass, let me show you how it works with our... Uh, doing our math, our converting, which we've done in the past. Okay, Let's say I've got a certain number of grams of, of an element, and I want to figure out how many moles that would be. Well, I know that one mole of carbon weighs 12.01 grams, right? How do I know that? I look on the periodic table, I find carbon, and there it is. That is the molar mass. Yes, that used to be called the atomic mass, but now we're dealing with moles, so it's the molar mass. So I just set up my converting like I've always done. Look, whatever units there, what has to be down here, and they all screamed, the same unit, right? We gotta have that cross canceling. Okay, so we get some canceling, and look what I'm left with: 0.847 moles of carbon. Okay, why it's important is because chemistry is really done with moles, not with grams. All right. Let's look at another example. Let's say we want to go moles, and we go to mass. Okay. So your your the problem states something like this: Hey, you've got 3.15 moles of helium. How much would that weigh? Well, you go to the periodic table. You find helium. It says 4.003. All right. So I write that one mole equals 4.00. And you know, if you wanted to be nitpicky, you could put a three there. I probably would, but that's okay. And I get 12.6 grams of helium. Again, like always, we're making sure we have that cross canceling of the units. Whatever unit is here, got to be down on the bottom, right? Notice this is just exactly like converting all those feet and inches and miles and kilometers we did before. Okay, let's do another one, but let's use Avogadro's number now. Let's say I want to go moles to atoms. You've got a certain amount of moles, and you want to know how many atoms. Well, if you know the conversion factor of one mole of anything equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, you could do this problem. So there you go. One mole, not 1 1.92 moles. I put one mole on the bottom, that many atoms on top, and I get that many uh, atoms of carbon. Okay. And again, just so you don't get too confused, let's say I had 1.92 dozen, right? How would you convert that to how many? I would go 1 dozen equals 12, right? And you would get your answer. So it's important to understand that, guys. Yes, this is a weird unit thing right here, conversion thing. But you just have to understand that it is very similar in thinking 12 is a dozen, 12 inches to a foot, 3 feet to a mile. One mole equals 
6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of anything. We're going to use yeah, atoms, of course, because that's more practical. But really, I could have a mole of pencils. All right. Okay, last problem. Going back to from atoms to moles. Okay, it's the other way now, right? I've got atoms there. What has to go on the bottom? Avogadro's number of atoms equals one mole. Now, I do want to say this. Every once in a while, I will get someone to try and do this problem by doing this. They'll go, oh, atoms is right there. I'm going to go one atom equals 6.02 times 10, 10 to the 23rd moles. Okay, And they've got the unit backwards. Hopefully this is not going to happen to any of you. But just remember that one mole equals that many atoms. Okay, so now I've got a couple more practice problems. I want you to, I'm going to put it up here. I want you to pause the video and see how you do. Try and do number one all by yourself, and then I'll walk you through it in just a second. Okay, how'd you do? Well, let's see how this would work out. First of all, I'm going to write my quantity right. And then what do I need? I need to find the molar mass of neon. So I'm going to look on the periodic table. Here's neon over here. And I can see right now that neon weighs 20.18 grams per mole. Right? Because we're these are our molar masses now, not our atomic masses. These are our molar masses. So I'm going to go 20.180 grams per one mole. Again, like just like always, right? Cross canceling, whatever unit's there has to be right there. Okay, and when I work that out, I get 6.194 moles. Okay, now is that the right number of significant figures? Hopefully, you're going to say no. Look at what I have here. I have three there, so I want three right here. So, chops off right there. So, the real answer is 6.19 moles. All right, here we go. Last one. Pause the video, try it. This one is the most challenging. Okay, here we go. Let's see how you did. 3.9 times 10 to the 23rd. Oops, 23rd atoms. Okay. Now, there is no atoms to mass conversion. Okay, there's no such thing. All right. For us, we've got to go to the land of the mole. It goes atoms to moles to mass. Okay, you must go through mole. You have to. You can't go any other way. The mole equates both atoms and grams. So we've got to we've got to go ahead and convert uh, to moles first. So how many atoms are in one mole? Six point oh two times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, and another clue. If you ever see this big of a number to start with, even if you have no idea what you're doing, divide by Avogadro's number. Okay, because otherwise we get people that, that come up with answers like to the 48th grams times 10 to the 48th. And our universe doesn't even weigh that, so you want to make sure you avoid that. Okay, last one. Now I've got moles. So this is a two-stepper, right? One mole of silicon weighs, well, let's look at our periodic table. Uh, it weighs, oops, 28.086. Okay, 28.086 grams. And th so my answer will be 18.208. Uh, oh, look at this. I only have three significant figures here. How about just 18? grams. There's my answer. All right. So again, like always, please bring your questions to class tomorrow. We'll see how you did. And uh, we're going to spend some time with this. So don't panic if it's a little confusing. We'll get this figured out. See you later.